things you got to remember. Explain to him the benefits of having the fence, right? Privacy and all these different things. And two, okay. selling this house for more money is going to increase their property value. Therefore, the money you're spending is actually going to make them money. I've done this many times. <laughs> A lot of uncomfortable situations in life, and this is one of them. So have fun. Welcome back to hopefully a not uncomfortable situation. Joining me from our LA studio is HGTV star and master house flipper Tarek El Musa. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing today? I'm doing so well. I'm really looking forward to talking to you. Uh, you're back on air starring in a new show called Flipping 101 with Tarek El Musa. Tell us a little bit about how this show differs from Flip or Flop. You know, I've been doing flip or flop for so many years, but on flip or flop, you'll see me making many decisions when it comes to real estate investing. Um, on flipping 101, it's really different because you'll see me making a decision, but then I'll explain why I made that decision. So it's a very educational program, and for anyone that has any interest in real estate investing, they can actually learn a lot by watching the new show. So how did this show really come about? I mean, have you wanted to share your flipping secrets for a while now? Did friends ask you for tips and it just kind of molded into its own show? You know what? Before TV, like, coaching was always a passion of mine. So I started off as a 20-year-old kid in Buena Park, California. And personally, I found a real estate coach at a very young age. And that coach made me believe in myself. He inspired me. And he really made me chase my dreams. So now I've, I've built this platform on global TV where I have the opportunity to give back and really help other people. So it's really my passion to help people change their lives through real estate. Uh, because as you know, uh, real estate made me. You know, If it wasn't for real estate, I wouldn't be who I am. I wouldn't be where I'm, where I'm at. You know, So it's just a huge opportunity for me to give back. What was the best piece of advice you got from that coach that you still think about today? Never quit. And actually, that's the same advice I got throughout my entire life. You know, at a very young age, my dad always told me, if you never quit, you never fail. So you just got to keep fighting for what you want, and what you love. And um, I, truly, uh, I truly believe that, and that's how I live my life. I love that, Tarek. Well, in the premiere episode, you helped couple Victor and Deanna flip a house they bought without ever visiting the space, which is giving me agita. First off, is this common? Yes, believe it or not, it is very common for people to buy houses sight unseen. Um, I do it myself all the time, but of course I'm experienced, you know, I've bought right. and sold close to a thousand houses. But if it's like your first or second house, it's a lot scarier if you're buying properties without actually looking at them. So I always suggest do your best to check out the house and if you can't, make sure the numbers are good enough to where if stuff happens, you can still make some money. The numbers are really the bottom line, though. Uh, I mean, you want people to visit it, but the numbers just have to be there whether or not you see it or not, right? At the end of the day, it's nothing more than a numbers game. You're buying something, you're improving the value, and you're selling it for more. And if you pay too much at the beginning, there's no room to make a profit. So I see so many new investors buy a house just because it's junky, not realizing that doesn't make a good flip. A good flip is a house that you can get for the right price. Right, exactly. Well, I want to take a moment to watch this clip from the premiere episode where Victor is very enthusiastic about an idea you think is utterly horrible. Let's watch. To maximize the sale price, I'm thinking of converting the garage into a party room slash studio. And I want to get Tarek's advice before pulling the trigger. It's your house, it's your project. I'm just saying, like, I... The, the worst decision that could have been made was made. Uh, the worst? It's not that bad. No, it's the worst. <laughs> You're right to the point in Blunt. The couple decided to add garage doors in the end, which was so important, but your delivery was, like I said, very straightforward and blunt. Would you say this is how you typically deal with teaching your house flipping newbies? I mean, honestly, it was the worst decision, and I'm not scared <laughs> to tell people when they make mistakes, you know. We're flipping houses. He brought me in to teach him how to flip, to teach him how to make the most amount of money possible. And turning a garage into a party room doesn't fall into that category. So I'm a very direct guy. And throughout the series, you're going to see me being very direct with these rookie flippers. And, and the reason I'm so direct with them is because there are real stakes on the line. You're talking about hundreds of thousands of dollars. You're talking about retirement money. You're talking about the college tuition. And if mistakes are made, these people are going to get wiped out. So I am very direct. What are some of the most common mistakes new house flippers make? Most common mistakes is one, they pay too much for the house, not realizing the numbers. Two, they don't take the construction seriously, where at the end of the day, construction will make or break you. If you try to do it yourself and you don't know what you're doing and it takes you a year, you can get in big trouble. So 
It, it all comes down to your team. And if you hire the wrong contractor, you can be in big trouble. So flipping houses is a risky business. And that's why it's so important to understand every aspect of the business. It almost seems like in this that you have to make sort of the right decision from the get-go. There's not a lot of room for mistakes once you make that first one. I mean, you, it's hard to come back from that. Is that right? Absolutely. It's a snowball effect. You make one mistake, it turns into another mistake, and then right. another mistake. So I, I just try to simplify the house flipping process, and, um, and, and, and I think I really, really teach a lot of people how to do it well. Well, over the season, was there ever a time where, you know, your students go against your recommendation and prove you wrong? Ooh, that's a good one. See, I, I don't know yet because we're not fully done shooting the season. Right. Uh, but as of right now, I'm not too sure. I think I'm right most of the time, but we'll see how the series unfolds. I'm actually curious, you know, when you're giving, you're, you're coaching these newbies, you know, but when you are torn between a decision, who do you go to for advice? Like, who's your first call to be like, should I do garage doors? Should I do a party room if you're waffling? You know, I've done so many houses at this point. You know, if I need a, a second opinion on it, I normally just ask myself. Or today <laughs> I'll ask Heather Ray Young, my girlfriend, you know, I'll be like, hey, I got this house. Let me tell you a little bit about it. And she's like, oh, you should do this, this, and this. And, of course, her feedback's awesome because, you know, she's in real estate as well. So we work well together. Well, another interesting moment from the premiere was when you coached Victor and Deanna into renegotiating with their real estate agent. Let's rewatch this. I am looking to see if you could, or if you're willing to possibly go to three and a half percent, and you will definitely oh, get the next two deals, the that, next that, two we deals that we come across. And if you can't do it, we understand. I don't even, I don't even sell my dad's house for three and a half percent. If you I can't do it, I completely understand. I'll do it three and a half percent. Perfect. All right, we got perfect, a deal. Man. I mean, it seemed, it almost seemed too good to be true. Is this unusual at all? Would you recommend this tactic for other people? I mean, listen, at the end of the day, life is a negotiation, and we have to negotiate on everything we do. In my opinion, if I was the real estate agent, I would have negotiated back. I would have said, I can do it for 3.5% because this is the value I bring, right? So he should have done a better job negotiating. Um, so it's a case-by-case -case scenario, but when I'm in the house flipping game, I'm trying to save money, I'm trying to increase profit, and I'm fighting for every single penny. Well, I mean, well said. Do you have faith that Victor and Deanna will be successful house flippers moving forward? You spent some time with them. What is your overall feeling? Well, I don't know if this is a spoiler alert. I don't know how much I'm allowed to say, but there's a chance we will see Victor and Deanna come back on another episode of Flipping 101. Oh, so this is good. This is a good, good story at the end. I like this confidence. No, I say he was crazy. He was tenacious. People thought he was all over the place. But at the end of the day, he was passionate. He was driven. He was motivated. And he made it happen. Well, and once he converted, you know, outside of the party room to garage doors, there was no holding him back. He just needed that little push from you.